Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Mansing. In our top story, Govern Government Chief Negotiator Natalie Tang Howell Nelson during a late afternoon press conference gave an update related to efforts to raise the salaries of teachers and other government workers at this impromptu press conference called by Government House on behalf of the Office of Collective Bargaining. The MAP administration, they say, changed its tune on retroactive pay for government employees with the chief labor negotiator, uh, stating this afternoon that all government employees would receive their salary increases that the governor promised earlier this year whether or not negotiations between the unions were settled. Tang Hao also added that employees who were part of unions that had agreed to the government's terms would start seeing their step increases this month. Count on two, we will keep you updated. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a 41-year-old St. Thomas woman. They say on Wednesday, April 6, at approximately 5 a.m., they responded to a call in regards to a disturbance in the area of Gottlieb's Quickway gas station in Content. As they arrived on the scene, they found 41-year-old Lakitha Toya Crabtree of Content Knoll, St. Thomas. She was on the ground just outside of the convenience store. Crabtree was bleeding from the head with abrasions about her body. They examined and transported the victim to the Schneider Regional Medical Center for attention, and then she expired en route. Here's more. This is media specialist Sakita Freeman here at the Virgin Islands Police Department. And basically on Wednesday morning around 5 a.m., we had an incident where a young lady actually passed away, sadly. But the police officers did their job by restraining the victim when she was having erratic behavior towards customers and civilians at the gas station. The police officers that arrived on the scene actually found the victim already bleeding from a prior altercation that occurred with one of the individuals individuals that just came to Gottlieb's gas station trying to buy some gas or food from inside the gas station. The victim was also throwing gas, glass bottles and, and being very erratic and aggressive towards everyone that was trying to enter the gas station. She was trying to also enter um, civilians' cars as they were passing by the area and on their way to the hospital after retrieving the suspect at the time who is now deceased. She passed away in the ambulance en route to the hospital. You may also contact the Criminal Investigation Bureau at 714-9801 if you are a bystander at the scene of the incident. Now, police say they did have some footage that they were able to uh, go over that was provided by Gottlieb's. Anyone having information about this crime may contact the Virgin Islands Police Department at 340-774-2111, the Criminal Investigation Bureau, 712-6024, extension 556. You can also ca call Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-8477. Here's an update. We reported in March earlier this year that four Corrections Bureau officers, Wahida Ali, 32, Abdul Robinson, 38, Patrick Richards, 41, Eustace Roper, 51, they were arrested after the U.S. Attorney's Office filed complaints charging all defendants with varying counts of providing contraband in prison, promoting dangerous prison contraband, and conflict of interest. Now a fifth officer accused of smuggling contraband into the prison has been charged in federal court following a multi-year investigation. Kolomi Kambui is accused of nine charges in a complaint, including providing contraband in prison, promoting dangerous prison contraband, and conflict of interest. She's also accused of attempted possession of a controlled substance, count on two to keep you updated. Governor Kenneth Mapp has approved tax benefits for a medical laboratory and three financial services firms. He recently signed off on agreements reached by the VI Economic Development Authority with Castle Medical, CD Paradise Holdings, Alpha Mortgage Advisors, and Prosperitas Holdings. As part of that deal, all four companies must make charitable contributions and provide benefits for their employees to include health insurance, paid leave, retirement plans, and tuition reimbursement. They each must also pay $2,500 annually toward maintaining the Department of Labor's database of Virgin Islanders living abroad who desire to move back home if they can obtain suitable employment. Miss Riviera is an Oceana-class cruise ship, the newest of the company's two Oceana-class ships owned by Oceana Cruises, which is a subsidiary of Norwegian Cruise Lines, they made a stop in the VI. And the West Indian company welcomed the passengers and crew 
on Wednesday with a traditional plaque ceremony. WICO's president and CEO, Joseph Bichelti, presented Captain Gianmario Sanguinetti with a commemorative plaque and a VI flag and other gifts. This is the first of two chartered Miss Riviera cruises from Miami that include stops in the Dominican Republic, St. Thomas, and Puerto Rico for the 1,250 passenger ship and its 800 crew members. Virgin Islands Port Authority says the next scheduled cruise ship visit in Frederickstead at the Ann Abramson Pier will be on Sunday, April 10th, by the Adventure of the Seas. And officials say, according to the old website, there was an indication of one on Saturday, but not so. The new cruise ship schedule may be downloaded from Viper's website. Viper officials remind you to keep in mind these schedules can change at any time. Meanwhile, the Virgin Islands Port Authority's Executive Director, Viper Carlton Dow, invites residents of the Boardfield Housing Community on St. Thomas to a public meeting to have an open discussion about the Port Authority's plans for Bournefield. The meeting will be held on Tuesday, April 19th in the Viper Administrative Building's conference room at 6 p.m. Dow said that he has also invited the executive director of the VI Housing Authority, Mr. Robert Graham, to speak with the residents about a future housing development that the Bournefield residents may be interested in. The meeting is open to the public. The unveiling of Morning Glory Ridge is coming up on Monday on St. Croix. It's the newest home ownership community located at Estate Mount Pleasant. The VI Housing Authority, the Housing Finance Authority, is inviting you to come out, hear the plans, tour the site, and learn more about the available lots. We are inviting all interested first-time home buyers to an unveiling ceremony on Monday, April 11 at 11 o'clock a.m. We will also continue to be on site from 1 o'clock to 3 p.m. so you can come out and select a lot, meet our contractors that will be on site with designs for two and three bedroom units, or maybe you just even want to purchase a lot that you can actually go on site and select a lot on that day. Turn our attention overseas. Officials believe a series of new arrests in Brussels today may include suspects involved in the recent terrorist attacks in Brussels, as well as last year's attacks in Paris. Diane Gallagher has the details from Washington. A breakthrough in Belgium. Several terror-related arrests, including, according to the prosecutor's office, Mohamed Abrini, a known suspect from the Paris terror attacks that killed 130 people in November. Now, these are pictures from a gas station surveillance video of Abrini taken two days before those attacks. Police say that he drove there with Salah Abdeslam, the other Paris attack suspect who was arrested in Belgium last month, just days before the Brussels attacks. The timing of Abdeslam's arrest and those bombings, just one reason security experts say police there should be on high alert. Every one of their intelligence, particularly their human intelligence agencies, should not be sleeping at night because that's the way they're going to find and predict future attacks. Now, today's arrest in Belgium come just one day after authorities issued a public plea for help, releasing this surveillance footage of the so-called man in the white coat, a remaining but unidentified suspect from the Brussels airport blast. Belgium's federal prosecutor says they are still trying to determine if Abrini is in fact that man in the white coat. Another man, Osama Krayam, was arrested Friday. He's believed to also have connections to the Brussels bombings. Preventing future attacks by stopping ISIS was the subject of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry's surprise trip to Iraq Friday. The United States is determined that together with our friends and allies in Iraq and the coalition, we will succeed. ISIS has claimed responsibility for both the Brussels and Paris attacks. In Washington, Diane Gallagher. Meanwhile, keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. And according to the numbers, we can see everything's up. The Dow 35, NASDAQ 2, S&P 500 also up. Coming up on News 2, Department of Education officials say the Alexander Henderson School will reopen and hold regular classes on Monday. And uh, we have much more, including our Carnival Corner and what's on tap this weekend. Tune in.
Welcome back. Department of Education officials say the Alexander Henderson Elementary School will reopen and hold regular classes on Monday, April 11th, following a temporary closure from April 1st to the 10th. It was confirmed today that the intended roof repairs had been completed. Interior cleaning is expected to be completed over the, the weekend. All lockers have been removed from the building and the area has been retiled and repainted. An announcement of the school's closure was made at a press conference, you may remember, on March 31st by Dr. Uh, Commissioner Sharon Ann McCollum, who said the move was necessary. School buses will also resume normal schedules. The Florida USVI Poison Information Center Jacksonville staff wrapped up presentations in St. Thomas today. They were here all week for the center's annual Poison Center Awareness Trip to provide free educational programs to several schools and healthcare organizations in the center's efforts to help keep the community poison safe. We ask that you call the Poison Center in the event of any poisoning emergency or if you even just have a question about a poisoning. Lock poisons up, keep them out of sight, out of reach, and locked up away from children. Uh, don't call medicine candy. That's a big mistake parents make because then the children just think it's candy and they want to go back to it and eat more of it. Don't go on the internet. Talk to our healthcare professionals. We're open 24 hours a day. Your call is confidential and the number is 1-800-222-1222. I'd like to thank the Poison Control for coming and seeing us this week and providing education to our staff on common pediatric poisonings. Poison Control is a great resource for, here, for us here at the organization. We do contact Poison Control when we have a patient who suspected poisoning and they follow up with us on a regular basis. Some great tips there again, 1-800-222-1222. Lionel Jacobs has been nominated by Governor Mapp to serve on the Waste Management Authority Board of Directors for the District of St. Croix. The term of appointment is three years. Mr. Jacobs, a trained architect, has worked as a designer and construction manager on numerous projects throughout the territory. He formerly served as an urban planner with the Department of Planning and Natural Resources and more recently as the Director of Planning and Construction at the Virgin Islands Housing Finance Authority. Jacobs is presently a part of the local hospitality industry as a co-owner of Arawak Bay, the Inn at Salt River. His appointment must be confirmed by the legislature. Well, in accordance with Title I, Chapter 11, Section 188 of the VI Code, April 7th is Cyril Emanuel King Day, and a ceremony commemorating his birthday was held Thursday at St. Croix's Kings Hill Cemetery. Hosted by Senator Positive Nelson, the ceremony featured Central High School ROTC and students from Ricardo Richard School reading aloud from Governor King's autobiography. We are gathered here this morning for the purpose of acknowledging, paying homage, reverence, respect and appreciation for the service of an honorable and righteous man. In 1869, he became acting governor for four months after Governor Ralph M. Kawanski's resignation was accepted by President Richard M. Nixon. In 1972, he was elected to the Virgin Islands Senate from the District of St. Thomas, St. John, a position he held until his election. Job well done there by the students. Well, St. Thomas Carnival and St. Croix Ironman competition is coming up. And in light of this, Seaborne Airlines has announced that additional flights have been added to their schedule in support. Additional flights will be added on May 1st, 2016. All flights will be on the seaplane downtown to downtown operation. The Twin Otter seaplane operates with two pilots and two engines for safety. 14 flights are planned for addition to that schedule, a total of 196 extra seats. Additional flights may be added if operations they say allows and traffic needs surpasses this increase. You can go on the website or call for more information on the schedule. Speaking of Carnival, St. Thomas's Carnival celebration has kicked off and it continues until April 30th. Again, the theme this year is nothing is more fabulous than Carnival in St. Thomas. This Sunday, April 10th, is the Princess Selection Show at the Lionel Roberts Stadium at 5 p.m. The contestants are Paris Chen of Yvonne Milner-Bowski, Layla Evelyn of All Saints Cathedral, 
Kelly's Gums of Calvary Christian, Sina Jackson of Gladys Abraham, and Denasia Tanman of Ola Muller. And all the best of luck to the young contestants. And then, of course, next weekend, it's the Queen Selection Show. Now, the Department of Public Works advises the public that the Fort Christian parking lot will be closed for Carnival, and that's effective 6 p.m. on Sunday, April 11th. All vehicles must vacate the parking lot no later than 9 p.m., or they will be towed at the owner's expense. DPW apologizes for any inconvenience. You can contact the Fort Christian parking lot office at 340 774 7046 for any questions. The parking lot is scheduled to reopen for public parking after the carnival celebrations Monday, May 9th at 7 a.m. Now, over on the Big Island, don't forget the St. Croix Food and Wine Experience is going on. The event is described as a culinary wine and spirits festival that began on St. Croix April 7th and continues through April 12th to benefit the St. Croix Foundation for Community Development. Tonight, there is a sunset barbecue on the Fredericksted Pier. Saturday, wine in the warehouse. Sunday, cuisine on the green on Carambola Golf Course. And then Tuesday, gourmet dinner at Haypenny Beach. Then the big event, a taste of St. Croix. More than 50 St. Croix restaurants, catering firms, and chefs will entice you at the DV Carina Bay Resort. Now, April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. A Child Abuse Prevention March is scheduled on St. Thomas Saturday, and the Family Resource Center wants you to join in. It begins at the Holy Family Church, and that march goes to the Tutu Park Mall. Why show your support? Because they say one in seven children is abused in the United States. They say the rates in the VI mirror those in the U.S., and we must do what we can to stop it. A gospel stage is a play that deals with real-life issues and actual cases, and it's coming up this Saturday at the BCB Gym. Now tonight, Friday and Saturday, actually at 7 p.m., it's called No Greater Love. The stars of the Drama on the Real production stop by to share why you won't want to miss this. We're super excited to bring the gospel stage play, No Greater Love, to St. Thomas. I'm telling you all, you don't want to miss this play. I mean, it's riveting. It's mouth-dropping. I mean, we've got great music, comedy, um, great writing. I'm not just saying it because we wrote it, but no, it's really, really good stuff. You're going to be entertained. It's all about this young lady who's dealing and struggling with several different loves in her life. Um, and these love uh, go on trial, and they are all claiming to be the greatest love in her life. I've been to St. Thomas a couple of times. I am married to Michael Shinnery, who is a St. Thomas homeboy. Yeah. So Drama on the Real has been around since 2007, um, writing plays that we are praying that are inspiring people. I was the one by your side when friends walked away. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Just come. 7 o'clock, BCB. Get your tickets today. Get them now. Be there. Just a taste of what you can expect. Now, there's another play that's going on, receiving some rave reviews called Sad Mangoes. That play by Stacey Bryan is going on at the Pistarco Theater at Tillett Gardens. It's featured in the 2015 New Playwrights Festival. It's a local story of love, conflict, and island life with a mix of humor and drama. It runs tonight, Saturday at 8 p.m. and a Sunday matinee at 2 p.m. You can get your tickets at pistarcotheater.com or 340-775-7877. Here's more. Relationships are hard for everyone, Josephine. That sad mango, some great actors there. You may have recognized some of them from uh, former uh, Pistocle Productions. Well, stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.